Hello, once again, out on another camping trip. This time I'm out past Greenwater, off of State Route 410, up the 70 road. So I give you a little update on my portable power setup. You can see, pretty cloudy today. Not very good for solar, as it's been lately, being February. So, pick me up off of Craigslist, a little Honda. 400 watt generator for cheap. Put about 50 bucks. Um, put together the cord, DC charge cord. Just modified another extension cord, bent the prongs a little bit so it fit into the plug. Looks pretty nice. But rather, rather than hook it to the battery, which I can using this end, I can hook it into my deep cycle battery. I've got it running into the input that I'd normally hook my solar panel into. And the reason I'm doing that is because therefore the charge controller regulates the input and manages charging the battery. I can't overcharge the battery this way. And up here, see coming from the generator, about seven amps DC. And there's the voltage and you can see how the DC voltage fluctuates and the open circuit voltage is 20 volts which is the same as a solar panel so this is well within the charge controllers capacity to handle and right now battery showing 100 percent it's probably near there it's being charged if you switch over here to the battery voltage still up over 12 volts probably around 13 and that's even with I'm running the inverter right now my laptop's charging over there as well as the external hard drive is running so that's even with some load on it it's still putting a charge into this battery and this generator will run for four hours off of just a half gallon of fuel now you might ask why don't I just plug my stuff into the AC outlet on the generator well it fluctuates a lot, it's not very clean power. It's actually at a higher, slightly higher frequency than a wall outlet. It's at about 64 hertz. And I'm running, you know, a laptop, an external hard drive, my radio, you know, some sensitive electronics. Now I know the output of my power inverter works well with my stuff. I've, I've used that for a long time. So this way the power inverter regulates the power or at least puts out the clean AC clean enough you know for my electronics. This regulates the incoming power plus charging the battery so I don't have to run the generator later tonight if I don't want to. And you can actually see on the generator The indicator light kind of flickers and that's as the load slightly varies and that's just because the pulse width mo modulation uh, pulse width modulation there we go controller is um, pulse charging the battery if I'm to unplug this cord watch goes steady, a lot brighter, and the engines revs up. If I can actually show you here, I'll unplug the incoming charge cord. I can get in here to do it. Hang on one second. Got the cord unplugged. No charge current. Let's go up here to the charging voltage. See, no charge voltage. If you watch, try to get a shot of both meters as I plug the generator in. Well, of course, the switch is going to act up now. 
got a little loose connection I got to fix there. But it'll spike up past 15 at first before the charge controller kicks in. There we go. Before the charge controller kicks in to regulate the power. And slowly the amps start climbing up to right about there. Can't go much past that. The generator at the DC output will put out about 8.3 amps. Which is a lot lower than the generator's actual capacity. That's only about 100 watts, I think I figured. And it's capable of 300 watts constant, 400 watt peak. But like I said, I prefer the cleaner AC power that even this mod modified sine wave inverter puts out. It's not a pure sine wave, but I don't got to worry about a voltage spike from the generator frying my laptop and other stuff. Of course, I guess I could just not bring my laptop camping, but hey, what fun would that be? Could fool around with all this new gadgets and stuff.